my friends in Siaya, Kenya. This is Pastor Brad Abley, and it is so, it's such a privilege to be able to come to you on this video teaching and open the Word of God with you in this fantastic study. This study I'm calling The Joy of the Old Testament, uh, an Old Testament survey, part one, as we go through the five books of Moses. And I just want to say, Karibu. And uh, Amosu Osiapena Mageno. And of course, in, in studying the Word of God, we want to also say Njo Roho Mtakatifu, which I know is Swahili for Come Holy Spirit. We need God the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and to open our eyes and to open our minds to understand His Word, to equip us to change us and transform us to become more like Jesus, and then uh, to help us to be his excellent representative uh, to everyone that we come into contact with. That's what this whole education has got to be about. It has to be more than just about uh, informing our minds, but, it, but this education has to Form our character to become more like Jesus as well to everyone that we come into contact with. And so that said, Walem, let's pray and ask him to move. Uh, Holy Father, we pray now your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and in our lives. And we pray that you would help us to hear with faith we pray that you would help us to hear with the desire to obey you and bring you glory. And Father, I pray that you would help me to teach in a way that honors you, that is accurate, and that blesses and builds uh, my dear brothers and sisters. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we left off... Um, last time on this new section which is called the use of the Old Testament in the New Testament and you see that over and over and over and you can see in the notes um, that surprisingly I write it isn't easy to come up with a precise number of times that the New Testament writers quote the Old Testament but the amount of quotations in the, Old, in the New Testament of the Old Testament is substantial. By a conservative estimate, the count is 295 times, covering about 352 verses in the Old Testament. Now, added to this is a range of estimates by different biblical scholars of the amount of times the New Testament writers uh, allude to and quote the Old Testament directly. And that figure ranges from 613 all the way up to 4,105. Now, um, we've already seen some verses from the New Testament speaking of the importance of the Old Testament for believers in Jesus. But I think we would do well to consider more. And as a matter of fact, uh, this morning in my quiet time, I've been going through 1 Peter, and I want to share something with you that just jumped out at me, and I thought, oh, I can't wait uh, to share this with the students. If you'll turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses 4 through 10. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 4 through 10. Uh, Peter says, And coming to him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, that is the historical background in 1 Peter as they were being, being persecuted. He says, Coming to him as a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. That Greek word translated precious is going to appear two times in this passage, and it means expensive or 
costly. It can also be translated valuable or honored or esteemed or distinguished. And my friends, because you are in Christ Jesus, you are viewed by God as costly, as expensive, as valuable, as honored, as esteemed, and as distinguished. And I pray that you would meditate on that truth. Um, and then having gotten it in your heart that you would, you would speak this into the hearts and minds of the people that you are responsible for to minister to. Just imagine if God's servants in the pulpit would build his people up according to the word of God, how it would change and transform them and how it would change our churches, how it would change the churches in Siya. So he says, but is choice and precious in the sight of God, Nyasai. Now, uh, Koro, <laughs> uh, you also, as living stones, verse 5, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. Every believer in Jesus Christ is a priest to God. We, we have that call from God to minister to him, uh, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. It's always in and through Jesus Christ. For this, now watch this in verse 6. He says, for this is contained in, what does he say? Scripture. And what is he going to quote from? He's quoting from the Old Testament. Here's the joy of of us studying the Old Testament and the relevance of us studying the Old Testament. And he says, Behold, I lay in Zion, which is Jerusalem, a choice stone, a precious, there's that word again, and now it's referring, what is the, uh, the choice stone, the precious cornerstone? It is referring to Jesus. But because we're in Jesus, we also are considered valuable and expensive. So he says, Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him, hallelujah, will not be disappointed. Verse 7, This precious value. Now, this time Paul, or Peter, uses a different Greek word for precious. It is, um, it's honor. Uh, that's really, really what it means. The Greek word is honor. So this honor then is for you who believe, but for those who disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone. Notice what he's doing. In, in verse 6, Peter has quoted Isaiah 28, verse 16. In verse 7, he's quoting Psalm 118, verse 22, which is primarily um, a verse about the Messiah. But notice what Peter's doing. He's doing a two, two-fold thing. It, he is, because we're in Jesus, we are being included in this. This is extraordinary. And then in verse 8, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. He's quoting Isaiah again, uh, chapter 8, verse 14. For they stumble, that is, the persecutors of the believers to whom Peter is writing, for they stumble because they are disobedient to the word, referring to scripture and uh, to the gospel message. And to this doom they were also appointed. Not that they were predestined, but that they chose to reject the word of God, therefore they're appointed to this doom. But, verse 9, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He is quoting a number of, of verses here, putting them all together. He's quoting from Isaiah 43, 
uh, verse 20 and following. He's quoting from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 10, verse 15. He's quoting from Isaiah 61 and verse 6, and then Isaiah 66, verse 21. He's quoting from Isaiah 9, verse 2. He's quoting from Isaiah 42, verse 16. Then he says in verse 10, For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Nyesai. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. What is he quoting there? He is quoting from Hosea. Uh, chapter 1 verse 10 and chapter 2 verse 23 so loved ones fellow men and women of God fellow bond servants in Christ Jesus fellow saints in Christ Jesus you can see now how you can see the unity of the Bible the unity of the Old Testament with the New Testament how the Old Testament prepares the way for the New Testament how the New Testament fulfills all of the Old Testament. It's extraordinary. So uh, moving on, uh, right below that next paragraph, you can see many, many verses that I quote for you. Please take time, even now, to look those up in small groups and make the connection. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and take about 10, 15 minutes in a small group, read the verses in the paragraph below and then uh, note where they come from in the Old Testament. I want us to see the connection there. It's a very important exercise. So please pause the video now, come back in 10 minutes, and then we can resume. Okay? Very good. All right, now, now that you're back, um, I've got a little section here called Comparing the Old Testament and the New Testament. I'm going to skip that for now. I'll let you uh, go through that. Then we want to go to this next section uh, called the law. And the Hebrew word for law is very, very important to understand this, is Torah. Torah. Um, and let me see if I can write this down. Okay, Torah, is equals teaching or instruction. That's what Torah means. Now, why is that important? Because one of the things I'm not sure I understand why um, Bible translators in the English Bible translate Torah as law, because it's confusing. If we think the Torah consists only of uh, regulations and, and laws, then it, it, it throws us off. But if we understand that it's the teaching of, or the instruction of Yahweh, well then, it's no wonder that we see in Psalm 119, for example, over and over and over and over, Oh, how I love your Torah, your teaching, your instruction. It makes me wiser than my enemies. It renews me. It brings me joy, and so on and so forth. You see that. In fact, you would have seen that uh, pre in the previous video when you did your exercise and looked at all the verses that spoke of the Torah. So when we see that word law in the Old Testament, the reason why we're defining this is hopefully that causes us in our minds to, to pause and say, oh, that's the teaching or the instruction of Yahweh. I hope that makes sense uh, to all of you. So the first five books of, of the Bible are sometimes called the Pentateuch. And that comes from two Greek words, penta, which is five, and tukos, which means scrolls. So it's five scrolls or books. 
They're also known as the books of the law, or better, the books of the Torah. Why? Because, as we're going to see, you have so much teaching in those books. Uh, you know, especially in Genesis, but a, a lot in Exodus, uh, really right up to chapter 19. Deuteronomy, you have a huge amount of teaching. Same thing with Numbers as well. Um, they're also called the books of Moses because Moses was the author of all five books, except for the very last portion of Deuteronomy, because that tells us about the death of Moses and Joshua would have written that. Now, these five books lay the foundation for the coming of Jesus, and they lay the foundation for the entire Bible, New Testament included. So they lay the foundation...